Spinosaurs are seemingly inevitable, in that whenever scientists think we know something about them, something new is found. In this case, it's potentially the best evidence that they survived the faunal turnover at the Cenomanian Turonian boundary, these stages during the Cretaceous, which ended about 90 million years ago and led to the extinction of many groups, including other large theropods like the Carcardonosaurs, but also a number of herbivorous groups like the Diplodocoids and the Stegosaurs. It's not known exactly why this happened, but climate change was likely a contributing factor, as increased temperatures globally were also punctuated by sudden cooling snaps, like the Planus cold event. A lack of fossils from Spinosaurs after these related climatic events at the Cenomanian Turonian boundary suggests that they went extinct then. Although Spinosaurs never really had a great fossil record to begin with, with very few mostly complete skeletons ever having been found. A few suggestions of something like Spinosaurus surviving into the Companion, the second to last stage of the Cretaceous about 74 million years ago, have been now treated instead as just indeterminate theropod teeth. So maybe they're from a Spinosaur, but they could also be from something else. We don't really have the detail to tell. That said, better study of those teeth could help prove that they might have lived in two places during the latest part of the Cretaceous, and that's because of new fossils from the Fundo El Triunfo formation in the Bagua Basin of Peru. The very bottom of the Fundo El Triunfo formation has been set to a maximum of 81.6 million years old, making it from the earliest part of the Campanian, although the formation is large enough that it likely spans through the campanian mestrictian boundary the Mastrictian being the final stage of the Cretaceous. There's three specimens in question, all of which are isolated teeth with no skeletal material. However, one preserves a root, and that root also has an additional replacement tooth preserved within that structure, so technically it is four teeth, not three. There are three specimens, though. The locality the teeth come from is in the upper portion of the formation, meaning potentially it is Mastrictian rather than Campanian meaning that this Spinosaur, if it is a Spinosaur, I'll get to that, is potentially contemporaneous with things like Tyrannosaurus, although they would have been on an entirely different continent, so they wouldn't have interacted. No Jurassic Park 3-type battles would have played out, although maybe between some of their relatives, like the Megaraptorans, which are known to be some of the largest theropods, in the case of things like my ape, one large Megaraptoran, and is related to the Tyrannosaurus. As for the potential Spinosaur teeth from Peru, tooth MUSM5121 is approximately circular, though it becomes more flattened towards the tip of the tooth, and a rounded base is fairly common in Spinosaurs, and at least Baryonychine Spinosaurs did have more flattened teeth, accounting for their slightly differing diet when compared to the Spinosaurines. Carinae are also present but unserrated, another trait of the Spinosaurs, which do have Carinae running down their teeth, but unlike other theropods, don't have serrations, denticles, on those Carinae. However, the authors do note that the teeth do have what may be traces of the denticles lost over evolutionary time, and the presence of small parallel dents and impressions on the front carinae, not the back ones. This is again, not serrations, but just potentially one of the genes which cause serrations being partially expressed, but not fully expressed. There's also these fluting grooves up and down the tooth, something found in basically all tetrapods that spend significant time feeding in the water. However, this degree of fluting is mostly seen in Spinosaurs and a few crocodilians, but very rarely in the crocodilians. This is also the specimen with another tooth preserved in the root, which also has fluting and the similar shape flattening near the top. So it's not just a one-off odd tooth, it's something consistent. MUSM4269 and MUSM5122 are much the same. There's no serrations, but there are little lines on the carinae. There's also fluting, and it's flatter towards the tooth apex. Morphometric analysis of many theropod teeth does show that these specimens plot within the known variation for Spinosaurs, but also with a few other groups where overlap is occurring. In particular, though, MUSM5121 plots closely to an earlier fossil tooth identified loosely as a Brazilian baryonychine. However, in other aspects, it does resemble the teeth from Spinosaurus and Suchomimus, which are also Spinosaurs. One issue with this is that they really did this comparison with theropods only. Conical teeth have evolved a lot. The Fundo El Triunfo formation is interpreted as being deposited by a river system, but that means also crocodilians or even rare freshwater plesiosaurs could have evolved very similar teeth and deposited them there, lost them there. However, those animals did not have granular enamel, which all of these specimens of purported spinosaur teeth do have. There's also the poorly understood unologines, which did also have adaptations for catching smaller prey like fish, such as the loss of the carinae entirely and also fluting along the tooth sides. 
However, their teeth were also more curved back than what we find in the Spinosaurus, and even the largest Ostroraptor would still have been around a ton less in mass than the average adult Spinosaur. And that's not Spinosaurus, that's things smaller than Spinosaurus, like Baryonyx. Again, they completely lost their Carinae, so unless one is found with Carinae, they're not a great match for this either. Because of this, and the general similarities to various Spinosaurid teeth, these authors interpret the teeth as Spinosaurid, but don't put a name on it because it's a handful of teeth, and genuinely, that should not be enough to name a new animal. That said, it almost certainly is, on the basis of it being in Peru alone, as all of the other Spinosaur material in South America comes from eastern Brazil. That said, I do have concerns. I am reasonably convinced that these teeth are from some sort of Spinosaurid. I am not convinced that that animal lived in the Fundo El Triunfo formation. If this site is a microsite, it's very possible that these fossils were reworked, meaning the individuals that they came from lived thousands or millions of years earlier. And if it is millions of years, that means this could be a Cenomanian or Turonian Spinosaur that lost these teeth, they became fossils, and then 25-ish million years later, a new stream ran off the growing Andes Mountains, cut into the area those fossils were buried, and took them downstream where they became buried again in the Fundo El Triunfo formation. Basically, in my opinion, there are two options. Either there's a 20 plus million year ghost lineage of Spinosaurus in South America, or the fossils were reworked. And until better evidence comes in the shape of a better preserved specimen with skeletal material from the Fundo El Triunfo formation, or a fossil filling in the gap between the Turonian Spinosaurus and the newly found Peruvian material, I think it's safer to say that it was probably reworked, which is still interesting. That would mean it is still the first evidence of Spinosaurus on the western half of South America. It expands their range, if they are Spinosaur teeth. Like I said, a lot of these teeth end up with very similar shapes. It could still be a crocodilian or a plesiosaur, although at least some of the evidence seems to argue against that. If, like me, you're tired of hearing about Spinosaurus, be sure to check out our website and shop where you can get your own Show Me the Holotype shirt, as well as dozens of other designs that we already have out there for various stickers and shirts, as well as other merch we have, like wonderful Lagerstatten mugs, among other things, as well as anything else we might add in the future, because we do have a feedback option or a contact us where you can give us feedback on what we should be adding to the shop, and if there is enough feedback saying, hey, we want a shirt that has blankety blank, we'd be happy to add that and be sure to ship those to you.